Well, welcome back. It's a trend large police departments started years ago, encrypting radios. These radios share in real time data ranging from the type of call, how many are responding, where the incidents are happening and whether there is a risk to the public. But fewer calls are being made on legacy police scanners. So here with us to talk about this trend is Megan Ryan, executive director of the Virginia Coalition for Open Government. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, first off, can you tell us briefly what the Virginia Coalition for Open Government does? <laughs> yeah, so we're a nonpartisan, nonprofit organization that's been around since 1996. And we help um, citizens, press, and government officials understand their rights and obligations under the Freedom of Information Act in particular, but also to general issues relating to government transparency. Now, back to, well, to these scanners, the issue with the scanners. So more police and county sheriff scanners around the country are starting to go silent. And we know law enforcement says this is because of safety reasons. But for some, this creates issues when it comes to transparency. Um, so one question we have for you is how can people hold the powerful accountable if they don't know what's happening? Well, that's, that's the exact right question to ask. Um, between um, encrypted scanner signals and increasing uh, secrecy around records of law enforcement and prosecutors, it is harder and harder to hold um, those in law enforcement and the justice system um, accountable. And it's not um, just, you know, in gotcha terms, we're not trying to trip anybody up. It's even just for the day to day good works of police and and prosecutors. And we just don't have any kind of regular access in Virginia and somewhat nationwide. But Virginia is especially closed off. Now, this move also affects rural residents, especially those without reliable Internet or cell phone service to stay informed during severe weather and natural disasters. So what steps do you think public safety and law enforcement should take to fill that void? Right. Um, when the scanners go dark or go encrypted, that did take a, uh, you know, a, a form of technology that has been around for a long, long time and that people could have accessed and makes it now reliant on internet or cell service. And if those are the only ways that um, citizens can stay informed, um, law enforcement needs to really step up its um, use of social media, its use of, use of emergency text uh, messages, whatever they have um, to let the public know of what's going on and, and, and if they are at risk, in danger or anything like that. Um, but yeah, it takes a it takes a helpful tool out of the toolbox. Yeah, when it comes to transparency, though, Megan, we know uh, some departments have what's called a uh, scanner repeaters, which replay emergency calls and police chatter on a, a 30 minute delay. Do you think that this is an appropriate solution? Uh, 30 minutes, a lot can happen in 30 minutes. So while yes, it's good to have sort of a historic record of that and for people who are saying, wow, I wonder what happened, that's a good thing to have. But it's not um, a solution because people who could be immediately in danger of um, some sort of situation involving a violent crime or a fire or something like that, that's a 30 minute delay is not going to help them. Well, how can journalists and Virginians hold the powerful accountable if they don't know what questions to ask or what records to request? Um, yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm increasingly frustrated about this is because we're getting canned messages um, and we're having the avenues for um, uh, objective um, observation. Um, taken away. So it just requires asking questions whenever you can and pushing back on um, just sort of stock answers of, oh, we can't tell you, oh, we can't tell you. There's something that they can tell you. They don't have to tell you everything, but they really need to give you some basic information that helps you both understand their work and helps protect the public. 
All right, and real quickly, Megan, our time is wrapping up here. How can folks find out more about the Virginia Coalition for Open Government? We're at www.opengovva.org. That's O P E N G O V V A dot org. All right, Megan Ryan, Executive Director of the Virginia Coalition for Open Government, thanks so much for joining us this afternoon. Great. Take care. Thanks.